to Cyberpunk, guys. So we're with Jackie. We're on our way to a mission here. V. So, all right, Jackie. We're just going to refresh our memory uh, by reading the journal here. Now, I, I just tried to start this episode and started to re-record because it was I was I was reading like the new like the YouTube advertising like guidelines thing, and they're really complicated now. And you know, some of them were saying about like using swear words in like the first 30 seconds of a video so <laughs> I'm gonna have to use replacement words occasionally at least if it's at the beginning of a video um, okay so uh, we're doing a a, a a job called the rescue Okako Okada got us a gig uh, so she's a fixer got an SOS call from one of her clients Sandra Dorset. all signs point to her having been plucked off the streets by scavengers, scavengers mother effers are in the biz of carving people up and selling their implants on the black market. I think it's time we paid them a visit. What do you say, Chica? Okay, so we can have a look here at our characters. So um, let's read about Jackie just before we go off on this mission. So from what we know early on in the game, uh, as Corpo V, he, he's, he's a solo who we essentially, essentially we use for jobs as like a freelance solo. Uh, he saved us. Some from uh, uh, from the cartel on the Mexican border, I think. At some point in our lives, uh, we kind of owe him for that, and he also obviously saved us from the Arasaka goons who wanted to flatline us. So, Jackie Wells, a proud son of Haywood, and an even prouder son of Mama Wells. Jackie's stubborn when he wants something. Oh, sorry. Uh, I thought I was about to say Jackie's stubborn mother. <laughs> uh... Jackie's stubborn. When he wants something, he won't stop or shut up about it until he gets his hands on it. Jackie always wanted a lot out of life, maybe too much. As a teenager, he joined the Valentino's gang, but realising how much he was capable of, he quit. For years, he hustled through the unforgiving world of Merc work, because you need more than a go-getter attitude to sit at the big boy's table. You need street cred. Jackie's life goal has always been to become a legend at the afterlife and make a heap of eddies along the way. Okay, so too good for gang life, sort of semi-prolific mercenary, but is also kind of a decent person within context, right? Because he didn't have to help us, really. Have we got any points to spend? No. Uh, I realised I didn't show my stats before, but I did say them, so that's what we're working with. Sorry, sorry, Jackie. Um, I just want to have a look around first, kind of like... A lot of homeless people maybe live in here. For some reason, the, sp the sprint button isn't working. Hang on. No, it is working. I forgot that I remapped it. There we go. Foolish man. Is there anything here? Hang on, Jackers. What have we got? Handcuffs and a dull scalpel. Great. Just what we needed, right? Is there anything else? Your move, Sorry, I'm on the lookout for loot, Jackie. Everyone's so impatient, man. Targets Sandra Dorset. Targets Biomon went mute a couple hours back. Suspected abduction. Okay. Target could have possibly flatlined already. Not sure you're in time. We're in time, Bug. We. Sure you're on phones, but that don't make you any less part of this squad. Yeah, it's a good point. Squad. Charming. Yeah, Jackie's right. You're part of the team. Bug. Could at least try to be nice. You want nice, supportive? Call the damn helpline. Alright, alright. Jackie's got his guns out, right? I mean. Looking for 1237. Target should be inside, but I got zero eyes on her biomon. Fingers crossed it's not too late. Ugh, I hate this life or death shit. Hurry. Go 
back in, go back in. Try hacking the door. Think you can trip it on your own, V? All right. Uh, hack which door? Yeah, we can open that. Takes cost us two RAM though. Is there another way in? No, it doesn't look like it. Sorry, Jack. Right, easy, Jackie. Profile. Yeah. Stamina regen. Sure. Let's drink it. Let's see if we can get any hints in here, messages. Are Fresh me. Is that her? Is we, that won't, our target, v? we won't forget you're a dead man walking. From Victor to Blaze. If any of your lackeys show up here again, they're in for worse than a split jaw. That's not an empty threat. Try me. Motherfuckers. <laughs> We're past 30 seconds now, I can swear. Oh gosh. Sandra Dorset's protected under Echelon 2 Corpo immunity. Our girl's top shelf. This one's packing black market Zeta Tech repros. Typical back alley fix ups. Not our lucky gal. Let's keep looking. God, that is grim. Uh, emergency on demand. How did it happen? When and why did we as a society decide that human life is a commodity, a luxury? My mother passed away at 45. She, she still had decades of life to live until it was all stolen from her by common pneumonia. If she had held even the cheapest trauma team policy, she could have been cured within an hour. But she couldn't afford it. My mother died five months before her scheduled appointment with our family practitioner. Five months. The idea of privatised healthcare is deeply ingrained in our public psyche. Already in 2020, there was widespread consensus that €500 Euro dollars a month was a fair price for trauma team insurance. Health wasn't something you were given, it was something you earned. The private system may not be perfect, but there's no alternative, we thought. Bullshit. Now across the Pacific Ocean to the USSR where they also have highly trained medical technicians, high precision nano surgical suites, specialized antibodies, intravenous probes, the list goes on. Emergency airlifts using modern AVs equipped with cryotonic chambers. They have those too. The difference then? They don't leave their people to die on the streets, at the store, in their homes. They don't force anyone to purchase their lives from a corporation as if they're the ones who own it. Public healthcare isn't some unachievable utopia, it's a reality. Couldn't agree more. Trauma Team, on the other hand, treats its policyholders as both potential patients to be treated and potential products to be bought. They save lives only because there's profit in it. A saved life is a returning customer. Client death can also bring in fiscal gains in the form of organ and implant resale, though of, though of course in regulated smaller sums. An emergency care provider can't afford to give its managers reasons to deliberately kill off its clientele base for short-term windfalls. Surely, you ask, these medical professionals are also guided by their Hipp Hippocratic oaths? Please. Yeah, man, I couldn't agree more. I mean, there are alternatives, right? Lots of countries have different medical systems, but I don't think an entirely privatized medical system is the answer. I mean, we have private healthcare in England as well. I've used private healthcare in England, but we also have public healthcare. Um, you know, places like Australia and Japan have hybrid health systems where low-level healthcare you have to pay for, but, like, expensive things are paid by the state. I think that's how it works. Like, if... I can't remember exactly. Like, if you were just to go and see a doctor for a small issue, 
Like I think that you might you you could have you would need to maybe pay for that. But then if you were to need to have major surgery or major treatment, you would that would then be covered by public funding. All right, Jack. I think that's everything. Oops. Sorry, I changed weapons. All right. Mira, eyes up. The nails are hid. Drop him quietly. Right, these guys are scumbags. Of the highest order. Enemies watching. Right, let's ice this guy. Hide from the scavengers is optional. We got any loot around here? Yeah, some some hell. I don't know where Jackie's gone. Uh, we'll read that later. We'll try and stick to the mission now. Tag him. Right, so we've got breach protocol. Um, let's just go through these options. So breaks through enemy ice, making all nearby enemies and devices connected to the network more vulnerable to quick hacks. Reboot optics. Resets the target's optics, causing temporary blindness. That is good. And short circuit. Deals damage to the target. More effective against drones, mechs, and robots. Got here. Take one down. Just real quiet. Grab the one closest. Just take them. Just like that. Okay, Jackie teleported then, but okay. Uh, have we not got ping? So we can distract enemies with this. And this music's so good though. Ah, uh, hello. Hello, hello, hello. But I count three currently. Okay, I think we should be able to take this guy out. Come here. Who's that? There's another guy there. Okay, so maybe we can drag this guy over here. Let's try that. 
That didn't work, even slightly. I meant to say, I turned off that annoying noise that plays when enemies spot you. You know, the bring, uh, which might be our downfall. Is there anything else we can distract them with? I don't think I can make it over there, dude. I wanted to turn the music on. Aha, there we go. Right, now we can get him. Oh no way, Jackie got him too! Nice! Okay. I don't know how many more there are. Lucky scratch card. God, that's all I wanted, guys. Okay, he's the leader, apparently. Have we got a way of pulling him out? Yeah, we can distract him with this. He looks like a big guy, though. Today. Don't see any movement on the sensors. Looks like you got them. You're clear to go. Shit, where the hell's our target? Look around. Oh. Gotta be there somewhere. I didn't realize. That's like a one time use of that huge gun. Now, where's that music coming from, man? How do I turn it off? Sandra. More messages. Pay or your head will explode. Uh, Tune. Today is your unlucky day. You're probably wondering who I am. I'm a voodoo boy. Probably heard of us. Remember last time you hit the net? Yeah, me too. I hack your coat, press it, and install a little surprise for you. Now do you... Do I say or your head goes boom? I think $1,000 is fair pay to keep your head. Okay, okay, fair enough. Blackmail. Implants for cheap. Sneaky. <laughs> Me too, Jack. And it's not my favorite way to roll, but no, but anyway. Oh, cash, cash, cash. This job pays for itself, man. Um, let's check this out actually first. Um, to gom. We won't forget you're a dead man. Oh no, we, we read we've read that already. Toys. Uh, from Gomp to Artyom. Got a lot of good stuff. Hand from Zeta Tech. Uses bio signature, but we ordered a jailbreak. Militech lock on sites. Wonder where this gonk got it. Arasaka hormone regulator. No bio signature. And some other little curiosities. Optics, actuator, and cosmetic real skin. Yeah, so they're picking up all kinds of stuff in here, man. Jesus fucking Christ. It be. I mean, I got a stomach of steel, but this, oh, 
this. Jeez. I think I got her. Got our target. We make it? She alive? About to find out. V, jack into our biomon. Need to know what we're dealing with. Oh, this does not look good. Now she's not the only one here. She's in a tub of ice, crammed in with another. Fuck. Like slabs of meat. Keep it together, V. If she survives, she won't remember a thing. Tiny scar on the subconscious, that's all. Heard people who live through shit like this get panic attacks without ever knowing why. Yeah. You'll be sipping a glass of ice cold water and suddenly your hand's shaking. V, jack into her biomon. We need to know what we're dealing with. All right. Jacking in. Sandra Dorset, NC570442. Trauma Team Platinum. Platinum? Shit. Trauma should have swooped in if she sneezed. Guessing they jammed the transmitter, Sig. Looking at a hacked biomon, firmware reconfig, or a neurovirus. Carajo, T-Bug. You ain't seeing this place. This is tubs, ice, hooks, and cleavers. Hmm. Scott Muncher's hack, huh? Got an idea. Check her neural cord. Find a shard? Yeah, pull it. That'll be what's muting the biomon. Is that a good idea? Is that even safe? Can't we just get her out of here? We found her still breathing. Can't lose her. We need that biomon working. Checking for hemorrhages, whatever. Find that shard and yank it. All right. Found the shard. Removing now. Check the biomon. Anything changed? Greetings, Sandra. If you are conscious, assume recovery position now. An emergency evacuation unit has been dispatched and is due to arrive at your location in 180 seconds. Biomon Clave's trauma will be here in three minutes. Your premium plan will cover 90% of the projected costs of your rescue and treatment. Ay, pobrecita. Let's get her off that ice. Uh, can you cover me, Jackie? Jack, look sharp. Not done yet. Don't know who's out there. Locked and ready, V. Do your thing. I wonder if you could sneak through that whole area without killing anyone. Or, you know, without taking anyone down. Like, the only time I've played... Oh, oh God. She's flatlining! V, need to know what's going on. Jackie. Jackie, air hypo! Fuck, this is bad! Catch, Chica! <sighs> I think... Oh shit, it worked! Buena chica! Get her outside! Yeah, the only... Scav rats abandoning ship. Must have seen trauma. Decided to cut their losses. Yeah, trauma are uh, forced to be reckoned with. TT even. Yeah, the only time I played through this mission, I did Buena, it by shooting. By Terrace. shooting. By shooting everyone, so... Hello, hello. Place the patient on the ground. All right. Five steps back. Now. I don't know how many that was. TT-133 to control. Patient NC-570442 secured. Stimulants being administered. 70 milligrams dopamine. 110 norepinephrine. 800 for Grenadine. Wow. Look at this place. Let's get out of here. Yeah. Elevator gets us to the garage direct. Good work. Shit show's over. Cutting my wires now. See you in the near future. All right, see you, T-Bug. Listen, Chica, I got this thing. Mind if I borrow your wheels? Huh. <laughs> I got a date with Misty, but I can't take the metro. How's I gonna look for me? Won't leave you hanging, Jack. 
Don't get used to it. <sighs> Sick of my ass, V. Thank you. How about I drive you home, huh? She's all yours. I'm beat as it is. Oh, almost forgot. Should get Wakako on the hollow. Tell her the job's done. Sure. Life coach is still there, Jackie T-Bug. Okay. Wakako. <clears throat> v, how did it go? Our client is alive and well. Somehow. Of course she's alive and well. It's what we agreed, isn't it? Splendid. Your payment awaits you. Ready to come and grab whenever you like, even right away. But I guess home is the only place you wish to be now. The NCPD has surrounded Watson. The oh. district is closed. If you are to make it past the cordon, you must move fast. Thanks for the heads up. Swing by to see you later. Words out the NCPD is going to put Watson on lockdown. If I'm going to sleep in my own bed tonight, we better put it in fifth. Leave it to me, Chica. I'm driving. What does the scan say about Jackie? Oh. What car are we driving? It's uh, an Archer Hella ECD 1360. First unit rolled off the assembly line in 2023. Notorious for its low quality. Great. Oh yeah, Jackie said he was driving. Any other, just bigger. Nah, Chica, not just any other city. Morgan Blackhand, Andrew Whelan, Adam Smasher. Legends are born here. I'm starving. Let's grab a tight bite. What do you say? Jackie, yeah, they're locking down Watson, remember? Oh, shit. Right. Is it just me or? Oh, I fucking knew it. Man on our ass. I don't like this. Man. Not one tiny bit. Scab! Hijo de puta! Fucking drive, Jackie! Come on, V! Dead! Keep her steady! Hold tight, V! Mierda, <laughs> perdón. Got you, assholes. B, aim for the driver. Chicago. <sighs> Scratched your baby up pretty bad. Sorry, V. Not worth much anyway. It's okay. I can wait. Let's just focus on getting home. Blockade's already in place. Damn. I'm pulling out all the stops. Watson's on lockdown to further notice. Necessary security measure. Officer, ma'am. Damn, are we ever lucky we ran into you. Really? What's it that makes you so special? A uh, heart of gold. Because <laughs> only somebody with a heart of gold can understand just how much I need to get back to my girl. Your girl? Uh oh, she's jealous. Uh huh. I'm gonna be worried sick if I don't show. I mean. 
I'm trying to be a stand-up guy. You should giving me a chance. Waiting. Hmm. That's a shame. Look at him. No model citizen, maybe, but he's a good kid. <laughs> Let them through. But they're the last. Okay. On your way. You have a good evening now, officer, ma'am. <laughs> Such a charmer, Jackie. And look at that mech. That's terrifying. I think she likes you, mate. She took a liking to you. The devotion I demonstrated grabbed her by the gut. Right. I'm loyal, stable in my affections. Mm-hmm. And unassuming. You get it. your average badges that's max tack ncpd's apex predators mtac rolls in when things fly out of hand gunks out there though just a midday snack for him well show's over poor bastards but they had it coming Uh, F to what? Skip? Oh no, no, I'm not skipping the ride. Made it. Almost at your place. What about you? Not likely to make it back to Haywood now. Kill V? They'll let me through. Sure about that? Oh yeah. I'll play nice Jackie again. Jackie's a bit big for this car, I think. <laughs> Cheers, mate. Tell Miss Sierra said hi. I will. Hey, luego. Hey, luego. Okay, we leveled up. Why is it still saying hostile? Why? See? Bug? I got earlier. A runner I know has something you could probably use. Zip in your deeds. Thank you, a job from T-Bug. The task T-Bug has given you is an important step on the path to developing your net running skills. Okay. Definitely do that. Host of the chip end program, which promotes the use of cybernetic implants. I love treating you, beautiful. Can't complain, Ziggy. Thanks for having me. Hey, guys. Yep, our apartment. Oh, stupid gates busted again. Third time. Paid to get it fixed the last two. Gotta be some kind of scam. Gonna have a word with the super. Oh, yeah. Okay, let's yeah, check our weapon sash. Your stash is a secure system for storing equipment and can be accessed from all of your available safe houses and vehicles. For example, if you store something in your car trunk, you'll be able to access it from your apartment. That's really useful. So I was originally going to use a uh, unlimited carry weight mod because there's nothing I hate more in any game than carry weight. But if we can just use the car. Okay, so there's some DLC stuff in here. Uh, that I probably won't use to be honest, but okay, so we've got some new shoes. 
Um, Nothing really we want to store, I don't think, because we've got 200 up here, so uh, we'll be able to sell most of these guns. Uh, I suppose, actually, might as well take the uh, the black unicorn. Yeah. Okay, let's... If we Did we have a jacket? Oh, no, there was the... I thought that there was some other DLC stuff. I can't remember. I don't know where we get that from, though. Um, we can put the wolf school jacket on. We look a bit kind of bare. I suppose it's uh, tipping it down with rain as well. I don't know. It just doesn't look right, does it? <laughs> uh, what else did we have? What is it? An anti-chem sin fabric tank top. I, I kind of prefer that, to be honest. Is it better stats-wise? No, but fashion over function, in my opinion. Uh, I prefer like leather stuff, so for shoes, I mean. So I'll go for stuff like this, although that's a bit cowboyish. But I'll do. We've got some extra weapons we can add. None of the pistols are better than this, so we'll leave them out. Picked up a tech double barrel shotgun. I think we we put that in there, and maybe just stick the black unicorn in there. Yeah, why not? And let's level up. So I want to go into hacking in particular for a bit. Uh, but breach protocol is definitely interesting. So I'll try and go and invest in both stealth as well. But I think I don't know if there are some really like basic ones we want like allows ram to recover during combat recover four ram units every 60 seconds was it not recovering previously um crafting specs for uncommon quick hacks stealth stuff i think now cold blood i think is more for combat i'm not sure so i might focus on pure stealth i might, might not go into cold blood too much uh, damage dealt by silenced weapons, movement speed while sneaking, I think that's probably a smart thing. Now, from what I understand, the dagger thing isn't you shouldn't bother with because it means you can't block with the knife, I think. Non-lethal aerial takedowns, yeah, I'm just going to get uh, this because it's... because it seems decent. Oh, and attribute points. Uh, let's stick one into cool, because cool and intelligence kind of go together. Okay, so have we got anything in our apartment that we maybe just want to check out before we go to bed? Ha! Yeah, new brain dance releases. Let's just read this. Uh, oh, we had a, a shard from earlier, right? Uh, we'll read that as well before we get go to bed. Okay, what's up, BD maniacs? Hungry for new for a new emo rush? Then check out the latest word from the freshest BDs on the market. Foreign body, body is everything. There's nothing else. <laughs> it's you, but it is also just a tool for your mind to interact with the world. But what would happen if this tool tried to live its own life? What if it tried to kill you? Though not a particularly original addition to the thriller genre, this brain dance featuring Luke Poller is still a solid experiential ride. The fear of disobedient implants has been around since pirates were walking around on peg legs. Well, maybe not that long, uh, but as a result, the trope has been pervasive in film, brain dance, and urban legend alike. Still, Foreign Body borrows some of the genre's best elements while still incorporating just enough new stuff to the mix to keep it interesting. After all, it's not every day that you see the world from the perspective of a sentient arm. No. <laughs> Maxwell's Rehab. This brain dance season has been chock full of horror, but this one stands out from the rest. The always phenomenal Maxwell Ramirez is pushed to the brink of cyberpsychosis so we can re relive his return to normalcy. The title offers a tone of optimism, but don't let that fool you. 
you will relive, relive Maxwell's slip into psychosis, the heartbreak of his wife, and the gradual reintegration into a world that's now far different from how he left it. This BD is a must relive of the season, but it's not for the faint of heart. And a Badlands Raid. At last, a BD for those looking for something a little lighter. Badlands Raid is a remake of the 2023 classic, which was an innovative tour de force of, of the time. For those of you unfamiliar, the plot revolves around an ordinary, boring guy who accidentally gets tangled up in a normal ambush, nomad ambush, on a Zeta Tech convoy. I won't spoil it because even though the main plot hasn't changed in 54 years, most people these days probably don't know the ending. What I will say is this. The remake's creators have introduced a few modern twists into the story that should make for a ple pleasant surprise to classics, lovers, and newbies alike. Yeah, so okay, my plan is basically, guys, is to go straight to the point that I've, that I, the, that I've, that I've played however long ago, which is the brain dance tutorial, and then after that, I'm completely blind. So I just want to get to that point as soon as possible, um, and then I won't have. I mean, there's still differences, right? Because I'm uh, the, the first when I, I, I tested the game out originally, I just kind of rushed through everything. Um, not not the kind of way I'd actually play a playthrough okay the other shard is it in here no we read the report on the sea of clouds we just read the brain dance releases we read emergency on demand and so uh, we've got cyberware usage and its side effects i'm not blocking i'm blocking a tiny bit of that <laughs> uh, many people believe we live we live in a time when impossible has become an obsolete term Ripidox can replace nearly any part of the human body with artificial implants, from your big toe to portions of the nervous system. My years in trauma team, however, taught me that the impossible is still very much possible. Even now, as we enter the twilight of the 21st century, we as medical professionals haven't been able to eliminate all the side effects that come with incorporating cybernetic elements into our bodies. Of course, everyone is familiar with the mental disorder most commonly referred to as cyberpsychosis. But it doesn't end there. Although advances in medical science for the greater part of a century have reduced this incidence to a minimum, cyberware rejection can still occur in a small subset of the population. These unlucky few can experience a range of complications, but the following are the most prevalent. Immune response. The body rejects the implant, causing scar tissue to continue growing to the point that it causes pain and inflammation of surrounding tissue, as well as possible interference with the tech's electrical circuits. Psychological effects. Neurological implants have the potential to cause unpredictable change in the brain. Possible side effects include depression, apathy, hallucinations, and sudden increases in addictive behaviors such as gambling. Implant overdependence. Long-term use of certain synthetic body part replacements can change the brain's chemistry to make it accustomed to a particular type of implant. There are reports reported cases of permanent blindness after patients attempted to replace their Kiroshi optical implants with different models. That's interesting, right? That's really interesting. Okay, in the face of these known risks, what should our outlook be as consumers and medical professionals? To de deny ourselves cybernetic enhancements on the 0.5% chance we could lose our vision forever? or gamble away our life savings at the casino? The clear answer is no. Cyberware technology has elevated human biology to the point where those what-if arguments serve against our best, best interests. The best advice I can offer for minimizing your risk is to read techno-medical profiles for all cyberware you intend to purchase before you install it. Yeah, I mean, same problems come with medication, right? If you even just read, like, the possible side effects of, like, paracetamol or aspirin, right? It's It can really scare you. Vexelstorm. That's a bit too metally for me. No, I want to I want to change the uh, radio. There we go. Yeah, a bit more electronic. That's what I like. Over substance? Time to change your look. Oh, style over substance. Approach the mirror in your apartment or safe house and select the change of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Whoa, who was that? Okay, what have we got? Have we got some messages? I think that these are circulars. Mega Medicine Lottery. Buy two tickets. Get third for free. A scam alert. Do not click any emails with ads for a penis enlargement nano gel. This is a scam.
uh, Erosex did the trick. God, okay. You've been attacked! Malware detected! To protect yourself, click scan now. Okay. Uh, now, yeah, there's some lore in here, I think. Yeah, for all the different parts. Samurai Web, Night Corp, M54 News, WNS News, NCPD, Mayor of Night City, NCART, and the Guide to Night City. We'll just read the intro to this. Welcome to Night City. Can a city, any city, be perfect? They say nothing's perfect, but Night City sure does come close. When Richard Knight drew his first sketches, he dreamed of creating a new society. His vision has served the majestic shapes of buildings, the complex layout of streets, and the ever-industrious inhabitants themselves. Feast your optics on Richard Knight's urban masterpiece, standing tall after 80 years. Cool off in the shadow of corporate skyscrapers in Corpo Plaza, each scrumptious on a giddy in the neon glow of Japantown. Get footloose in any of the clubs downtown. Just remember to stay in the neighborhoods under NCPD jurisdiction. Night City wears many different masks. Ah, that's it. I think this is where we get the other DLC stuff. Biker jacket, boots. There's some bad duplicates. Straps, long sleeve. Nice. Um, I, I kind of want some long sleeves. Uh, I will not be wearing a hat. Not today. N not those shorts either. I liked those. Yeah, those boots. Yeah, they look nice. And then, oh, I picked up both by accident. I don't mind that. We picked up a uh, biker jacket. Doesn't really go with the shirt, does it? But oh, that's horrible. If it was tucked in, it might be okay. Okay, the starting top looks all right with this jacket, and it kind of matches our hair. Nice. Alright, that's our objective, so... What a day. Hello, Night City. To quote Blade Runner 2049. God, it's 11 o'clock. I think I might have caught something. When I jacked into that Corpo's biome on. I know a neurovirus or... I need to see Vic. Let him tell me what's got my head reeling and my stomach churning. Okay, let me take you. I brought you a ride. Yeah, throw on some threads, meet me downstairs. Okay, they took my jacket off. Hello, Night City. Okay, so we need to meet with Jackie. Um. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. I will change my hair colour and stuff from time to time, but we'll leave it as is for the time being. Okay, so I think uh, I'll uh, I'll do a little journal catching up before we move on. Yeah, so this is us. Uh, oh yeah, that's just the intro for Corpo V. Uh, something been added to Jackie? No. Okay, T bug. Uh, T bug is a textbook example of how solos and netrunners really aren't all that different. Both take on risky contracts that usually end up end in dust-ups with corporations or the law. 
ever walking the tightrope between life and death. After all, black ice isn't any less dangerous than taking a bullet. T-Bug's well aware of this fact, and as a legit specialist in her field, she's fully within her rights to be picky about her contracts. Unlike more rec reckless netrunners, T-Bug intends to sail into retirement age, preferably with enough eddies to leave this goddamn city behind for good. Okay, interesting. She's got a plan, I suppose. Uh, Wakako Okada. So she gave us the job for Sandra Dorset. If you're looking for decent paying gigs in Westbrook, go to the Pachinko Parlor on Jig Jig Street, run by a fixer named Wakako Okada. Rumors abound, but as of yet, nobody's worked up the nerve to ask about her past and her very many very dead husbands. <laughs> She didn't kill any of them, probably, but hey, what's important is that they're gone and she's still going strong, growing richer and more powerful by the day. Every serious player in Night City respects Wakako. Going into a meeting with her is like getting into a cage with a lioness. Sure, the lioness is polite, but you can tell she's already thinking about her next snack. Maybe that's why Wakako's gigs are carried out almost immediately and flawlessly. Wakako takes this entirely for granted. Um. And let's just read about where we live, I guess. So we're in Watson, which is currently locked off. And this is our apartment, right? Yeah. And this area is Little China. So can we read about that? Arasaka Tower, V's Mega Building. Yeah. Okay, um... Okay, V's med Mega Building. Besides the 2,000 apartments identical to V's, this Watson Mega Block also features luxury penthouses on its upper floors. Further down, you can find various service points, stores, market stores, a gym, even a shooting range. To a certain extent, Mega Buildings are truly self-sufficient. Self-contained ecosystems. Many of their long-term residents, especially netrunners, haven't stepped outside in years. Yeah, yeah. Just reminds me of uh, just dread, right? And these, these like these mega buildings, yeah, like this says, uh, are self-sufficient. So they have their own shops and all that kind of stuff. So you like never have to leave. It's like a kind of. It's not indentured servitude. I don't know what you'd call it. Um, but it's essentially like being in a, a kind of economic prison, living in this kind of place in some ways. Okay, we will read everything at some point, but let's... Uh, so, Watson is this surround this whole area. Okay, Watson was supposed to be the beating heart of Night City. A few decades ago, Japanese Zaibatsus invested... I don't know what that means, but Zaibatsus invested billions of euro dollars in skyscrapers, nightclubs, the med center, even industry in the northern area. All intended to make the district self-sufficient and prosperous. But everything changed when Arasaka returned to the city after the Unification War. The corporation steamrolled all of its competitors and without a sta stable financial sector, Watson caved in on itself. Jobs in the Northside Industrial di District completely evaporated, leaving people out on the street, allowing Arasaka to buy up all the now cheap real estate. Turns out the move was calculated. Arasaka needed poor access. Today, Watson is one of Night City's poorest di districts Inhabited mainly by workers in North in Northside, earning ennies, which is pennies, euro dollar pennies. And uh, our block is in Little China. In the 40s, this part of Watson aspired to be the next city centre. Corps invested heavily in the area, putting up towers and cutting edge clinics such as the med centre. That's where you slapped down your cred chip for implants. That's that is. If you wanted to get them legally. I'm reading at a weird pace. That's where you slap down your cred chips for implants, that is, if you wanted to get them legally. But soon enough, this neighbourhood became populated with immigrants, mostly from China, hence the name. Over the next few decades, the district became increasingly more populated and diverged from its original plans. Today, Little China is considered a poor district, but its food, smells, neon lights, tucked away little shops, and overall atmosphere draws the crowd. Even low-ranking corpos drop in to gamble and put euro-dollar bills into the into thongs. Thongs or things? <laughs> oh, yeah, obviously for strippers, right? I understand. Of course. 
The sight, the sight of suits strolling past the homeless also shouldn't take anyone here by surprise. Okay. So I think that... I don't think Corpo Plaza is here. Or... Um, I think Kabuki is. I don't think Japantown is. Uh, what else have we got? This is all tutorial stuff. We read all the characters and vehicles. What was ours called? It was an archer, right? Yeah, it's, it's this. We'll read our car and then we'll call it call it a day for this episode. The Archer Heller ECD 1360 made in, uh, designed, or I should say, in 2023. Cars should be made well, but never too well. Archer's board of directors learned this truth the hard way when, in 2023, they launched the first Heller series, which proved so reliable and easy to repair that it nearly drove the company to bankruptcy. <laughs> Many who bought a Heller in those days, for a generously affordable price, it's worth noting, often never found themselves on the car market again. Even today, more than 50 years later, Archer Hellers are a fairly common sight on the streets of Night City. Of course, time has taken its toll, leaving many of them rusted and screechy. Still, they continue to move people from A to B. That is, unless they crash into something along the way. In those cases, there isn't much left to rescue from the wreckage. Despite their functional reliability, the car body is manufactured from cheap, brittle material. Fortunately, for most car owners, if you lose a bumper and a leg in an accident, both are easily replaceable. <laughs> nice. Beautiful samurai on the radio. Right, uh, I'll leave that episode there, guys. We'll go and talk to Jackie and get this illness fixed. So I hope you enjoyed this episode, guys. Please leave me a like if you did. And just remember, everyone, never trust an on crate. I'll see you next time.